Hey everyone, Spinners Follows Me here. Welcome back to yet another replay analysis. Today we're looking at Mega Noob Sniper playing in the Essex. This is a tier 10 game, but not that heavy of a tier 10 game. The enemy division is actually a failfish division, so we have a tier 9 carrier with a tier 10 ship. I mean, it's not that big of a deal overall, but. Uh, hey. <clears throat> Anyways. Bit of a mistake in my opinion, we're launching the torpedo bombers before we're launching the fighters. We also loaded in a little bit late, so we didn't get the full headwind opportunity, especially with the spawn we got here, we should be definitely going full speed ahead. Ordering fighters to, to escort the torpedo bomber, but in my opinion this is a big mistake. Considering our spawn, considering where our shimmy is, thankfully it's AFK at the moment, we definitely in my opinion should have launched fighters first to go for a disruptive opening against an enemy carrier. As a USN carrier against an ITN carrier, you're not going to get the first strike off, it's up to him to make the first strike, so launching fighters before torpedo bombers is generally going to be better because you don't risk your fighters getting spotted earlier. You don't risk your torpedo bombers getting, you know, like this, getting in the way or him just head on strafing you. There we go, we're looking at the fighters. The number three torpedo bombers should just F off, it's got nothing to do here. It's basically spotted already, so it, it's already known. We're Using it as a scout is generally not that good, and we're uh, escorting it with our fighter. This is a very, very bad thing. All we're really doing is inviting the enemy carrier just to strafe and, you know, kill our planes and thin them out. Generally, not recommended at all. It's better, especially with, since we're playing in this mode, it's better to just micromanage them. The moment gets spotted, we should just immediately, rapidly advance in the opposite direction. Looks like our camera gets taken out uh, not near the Des Moines. We need to be managing the planes that are down there because we don't want to be there. Just run. We... It's a Des Moines, there's a child baguette right next to it, there's, the chances are one of these guys at least will have defensive, we're losing torpedo bombers already, those bombers are never going to get the drop, if we're going to do anything at least strafe the fighters in the process here, but we shouldn't even be here because these guys are going to die, probably the Charles Mattel trigger defensive A, that's a complete waste of a strafe, we just need to run, number two fighter needs to run as well. <clears throat> we've got AP die bombers, so we we should just you know put our fighters somewhere around here to stop the enemy carrier from coming, he's going to get a strike off, there's nothing we can do about it, our fighters are over here dawdling about, so we should just stack these two die bombers up and go click the enemy's base mark away. We AP bombers, so we might as well put some use to them. Our fighters are still healthy enough that we can uh, deal some damage to the enemy's uh, aircraft carrier's fighters. I think the Des Moines chipped a couple. And now we know that the, the guy is 2-3-2. Two, two. He's not playing some weird fighter setup. Base marks got some a bit... No, he is... No, he did not. I almost read that at 82 somehow. But whatever. We've got double die bomber. We can put up to good use. But we need to be careful of our torpedo bomber replacements. We're basically out. That fighter isn't going to do anything. Our planes, this plane's now way too close, so it's, you can see it's already going to latch, so it doesn't really matter. And there you go, it's been clicked to order, so that's good enough. It just could sit there, and it's dead. Our other fighter needs to be, uh, can for example be deployed over there, or you know, moved elsewhere. We get a really, really good click on that for 45k, so that's some pretty damn solid damage. He's going to have a really bad day. Misery should be able to deal with that at the moment. But, all the way back home now. Our ship is slowing down, we've moved it forward to this point, which is uh, pretty fair, it's in a reasonable position, but we do need to be aware that the enemy's push is up here, so we need to either focus on that or, you know, go somewhere else. We don't want to be taking and clicking engagement inside the Bismarck's AA, we can see the Bismarck's AA does, uh, does do some damage, we just don't want to be here at all, we will lose this engagement, our fighters are inferior individually to a uh, IGN carrier squad, this squadron over there is pretty much just flying past, so we're gonna likely lose some planes on the way in there. This is... This is a bad engagement because our planes are not ready yet. And there you go. We're disengaged strafing to go give him the good strafe. And this tells us that the opponent carrier doesn't know how to uh, doesn't know how to micro his fighters and does not know how to counter strafe. If that had been a competent opponent, we would have lost uh, basically both our squads at that point. Actually, that would have been counter strafe, and he would have just retagged us. And if we you know tried to stay to fight inside of Bismarck's AA, would we would lose that? And it it wouldn't be. Well, it wouldn't be a bad trade for him, but it wouldn't be really great either because, I mean, we have a lot of fighter replacements that he just simply doesn't. But, regardless, at this moment, we could make a consideration to move our ship somewhere else. Got the Peter Bombers up. I don't think the base mark is the best op uh, target for us to really go for. I... You know, because that's going to happen. He's going to die. Alabama could be an option, but I think that the Kronstadt is the much better thing to get rid of at this point. We're down on replacements because we wasted the first squadron against the Des Moines. Not very good usage of aircraft overall. Enemy carrier is sending a single squad against the Misery. If he's not, you know, focusing enough to click on it, that could, of course, be uh, be quite useful. Very good thing here. We're attacking from the opposite side of the Kronstadt, which means that if he doesn't have... Uh, if he's not paying attention to it, and this is a little bit overlaid... But a little bit on the overlay then, I think. Yeah, uh, we're dropping pretty far away, actually, so... But, you know, we can clearly see he doesn't want to push against the Misery, so... Uh, 
Unfortunately, we're only going to pick up three hits against him. Could have been a better drop if we just uh, put it, you know, a little bit further away. He doesn't defend it. He doesn't even notice it. So, uh, and that's the thing about attacking from the opposite end of the ship. Often they just don't actually realize it's there if they're, you know, currently in combat with something else. This should go next to us. Perhaps need to be aware of that. We're reversing now. It's generally not recommended to reverse as an aircraft carrier. She made that uh, dev strikes the enemy Charles would tell. Good result overall. These AP bombs aren't incredibly useful anywhere else. We might as well put them to use to kill off the Kronstadt. I wouldn't bother stacking them in front of him like that. The Kronstadt's AA is horrible. So just full stack and click and see what happens with them. Well, <clears throat> okay, minus the stacking part, but just, you know, clicking him because his AA is so horrible. It really doesn't matter. Double sit. Kill shot's gone. Good, good useful riddance. He's no longer going to be threatening the capture circle. But we're still kind of losing despite having three enemy kills. So really up to, at this point... It's a lot going to be down to whether or not we can start picking up kills and clearing flanks. So I definitely think that the Alabama over there should be the next target. And with HE bombs, we would be in a much better position to eliminate him. Enemy carries attacking down the southern end of the map. He's been doing that. This is his uh, second attempt down there. Probably means the enemy carrier is somewhere up here because the time it takes for him to get stuff going is pretty long. But again, unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it. But it thankfully looks like he's auto-dropping, so... Uh, not the greatest result in the world. We're not going to be able to cut off and retreat past that. So, uh, my takes down on Montana and Amogami is probably buggered at this point as well. Devil fighters are still loitering mid. We probably should move the second fighter down here because the enemy's fighters are over here. We can't risk Ashimi getting spotted by aircraft right now. We need to be in a position to escort that. The stuff up here, it's not a big deal. Moving our ship north, which is a pretty good position to be in. Looks like Amogami fail, failed with the torpedo get, drop against the Bismarck, which is a little bit awkward. Gives a second drop off though, but that's not going anywhere near the base mark. There we go, we're finally getting our torpedo bombers airborne again. We're not doing anything useful against the Des Moines. They should be sent against the Alabama, but they should also be waiting for the double dive bombers to stack up. That way we lose fewer planes. Guys down there actually trade, but there's still the hipper down there, so it's not the world's most favorable trade ever. So as we spotted down there, so pretty much tells us uh, something is up there. Hopefully our Shimi can torpedo down theirs, but I, I doubt it. More striker planes coming in there, but they're too close to Des Moines. We shouldn't be trying to mess with that. These torpedo bombers should be going off against the Alabama. I wouldn't... At this point, I would leave the other fighter there because it's one fighter squadron. As long as they don't take an engagement in enemy anti-aircraft, it's not going to screw us over. That plane shouldn't be heading anywhere near there. So we can throw away an entire squadron to click fight him, and we need to click him first before we get... Screwed, or just strafe him, but hey, we, we, we can just click fight him there. Looks like we're going for sushi in this case. It's perfectly fine to do that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going for sushi here. Just get up there properly and do a drop. I would probably line up here a little bit, but it looks like he's going to not react to it, so that's perfectly fine. If we're going to lose our fighter squadron. At this point, just bail him out. We might be able to salvage some planes. Our time to ship isn't that bad. Five torpedo hits. Very, very, very good drop there. Good result. Deals some damage to the enemy fighters. We're, if all else were just bleeding it, this fighter squadron should be heading down here and trying to go spot at the moment. We're not really microing anything at all. And there we go, we're setting it down there. So, uh, trying to... When it comes to aircraft carriers, and uh, I know that you've only been playing the game for five months at this point, but uh, you're actually doing a pretty good job overall. And it looks like the uh, Musashi is flooding, which is very, very good spot of luck for us. This is not a useful tag. The, this is not very useful. It's a very damaged squadron, and chances are our opponent aircraft carrier is now lining up to make another attack. And five needs to be told, uh, three needs to be told to land. Our torpedo bomber. There we go. Um, when it comes to learning carriers, trying to learn everything usually just means you learn nothing. The best thing to do is to try to decide on one thing that you've seen or one thing that you know you want to learn and try to learn it. And I would definitely say aircraft micro is the better option. And this time we get kind of lucky the enemy carrier is uh, not effing about there. This strafe is definitely capable of thinning out this uh, group. So very, very well done there. That is a bunch of kills. These dive bombers can serve as a little bit of bait. We can also just come along and just, that fighter is not gonna catch that. It's not gonna be able to catch them before they get the drop. So I would use it to tag the biggest enemy fighter squadron over there. Or use it to side strafe away the enemy's fighters. Because we're not going to catch, we're not going to stop it, the, the drop. We might as well make sure that we get the best possible drop off for our sake. And there we go, we tag one squadron and our rear gunners take out a couple of other planes. Circling them around here. Um, 
yeah, I suppose it works. We, we, there you go. It looks like he's bailed, so he's going to try to deal with our fighters. But initially, his AA is now in position to support. We lost quite a few planes for that. We need to, we need to get our number three torpedo bomber squadron to take off. Also, we need to re-click the enemy fighter. There we go. Unless he's clicked us, of course. Looks like we're going for the Des Moines at the moment, but we're basically going in the way he's currently staring. So chances are he will detect these planes coming. If you want to attack somebody, especially a Des Moines like this, anyone, anyone really, what you want to do is to try to figure out um, where they're looking so that we don't get a defensive. But we get incredibly lucky that the Des Moines either didn't have defensive or wasn't paying attention. So that was a very poor play by the Des Moines. Yeah, we get the kill in the end, but uh, it's not a move I would recommend. But in this case, it's a risk that we took, and it's a risk that actually worked out. Now, our priority should be finding that shimmy. Everything else is kind of irrelevant. We should be looking to park a plane on the shimmy. We probably should be seeing if the hipper is low HP, but here, the problem is he's the opposite end of us. So we just need to protect this Des Moines, ensure that he can engage this hipper for you know best possible effect, and probably try to attack the Montana at this point. Without HE bombs, attacking the Montana isn't really necessarily the best idea ever. But there we go, we do actually find the shimmy. So if we're actually able to drop that, that would be incredibly useful. Chances are he's going to break away so we can get a cut in like this and drop. I think that not perma spotting the, the, uh, the shimmy is a huge mistake. And potentially, oh no, there goes our Des Moines. He gets inserted by the Montana. So that's probably game already because we don't have balance ships left. They do, so uh, we've lost and they've won. Because our shimmy is dead and theirs is still alive, so I do think that uh, whatever we do at this point is just a matter of getting a little bit of bonus damage. But um, normally it's recommended to try to go for shimmies in this kind of a position. They're generally easy targets. Our number one fighter, we've got nothing to micro, so they should be going down there to defend the monarch. But um, I guess we're at this point not uh, paying attention. This is what I mean. Uh, currently from what I've seen, and the enemy carrier is auto-dropping by the way, the best recommended the thing for you to focus on is your map awareness and your general micro. Strafing down like this that might let us catch the fighter, but we click too close, so at this point just pull away. We he doesn't have a strike available. We do, so we don't want to lose our uh, we don't want to lose our fighters and their ammunition while we have a strike to make. We want to keep his fighters kind of occupied. He still got one more torpedo bomber left, so uh, side strafing there. It's gonna clip a couple, but it's not gonna wipe the squad up front. Gets, gets a reasonable drop, actually, but uh, we should just set... Well, we can't do anything because our fighter's out of ammo. we got double dive bomber they're going in to drop. This time against an Alabama, I would uh, you know stack them up properly and drop them in, uh, in full. And now it would be an idea to... I'm going to take control of the camera here so we can see what's going on. Look at the health, look at the health, look at the health. See who is a lower HP target and who are the one we're more likely to kill. This guy's being pressured by a Kronstadt and a Prince Eugen, so going for the Musashi is definitely the right move. But... Um, uh, you know, because chances are everyone can shoot the Alabama and we can go click the Musashi. Our fighters are kind of circling around there. One of them needs to be told to go home. Looks like the enemy carrier is still sustaining an engagement. He doesn't really win, but uh, there we go. We're telling our number three to launch. Good thing there. Ordering a manual drop against the Musashi. I'm... There you go. Very good drop. Gets rid of the Musashi. However, at this point, it doesn't really change the outcome of the game. We're kind of flying over in Alabama to get home, but at this point, it, speed is of the utmost importance. Trying to circle them around doesn't really matter, and there you go, someone finally manages to kill that. But again, spot that shimmy. There is a, actually, at this point, a solid chance we can win. Uh, if we're able to get the Kronstadt into Bravo, and we can get this empty fighter to spot the shimmy. Now, this is important because it eases pressure on the Kronstadt, by allowing the Kronstadt to know where the shimmy is exactly so that he doesn't actually have to worry about being torpedoed. Because currently the shimmy is kind of single stacking torps. And that Montana is pretty healthy overall, so these planes are unlikely to survive too much. And at this point we can't really kill that Montana because we're out of useful planes to drop against them. So we're, we're doing a bit of a circle around, a uh, bit, bit unfortunate there, but I think at least two should still survive to drop, two get to survive to drop. And the Kronstadt radars down the shimmy, but these fighters, they needed to be down there to support the Kronstadt. Uh, he was actually, at this point, the only player left on the team that was in a position to get the victory. And he's about to likely go down to the aircraft carriers. No defensive A up for the Kronstadt. He is dead to auto-drops. 
which is really unfortunate because this could have been a very good win. This is the squadron we needed to focus down because the others have already auto-dropped, so we kind of end up strafing the Void, but he's going to get crossed and killed. There is absolutely no way he is surviving that. And uh, a part of that comes from not having the awareness to basically support the targets that needed the support. And at this point, we're pretty much guaranteed screwed. The health on the Montana is way too high. Um, so with that, that's pretty much closing this replay, guys. Nobody's getting into Bravo. The Shimmy's gonna live. These guys are unlikely to kill that anywhere near on time. We can't kill that because we don't have the right bombs to kill that. Kind of stuck on an island broadside on, so if the Montana wants to delete us, he can definitely pick up some good damage off us if he wants to. It's those. It's not those planes spotting us. They're too far away from the ship unless we've got something else here selected. Should tell the last fighter to take off as well. It's already been... It's been cycled. Triggering our defensive anti-aircraft is a bit of a waste. There's no enemy planes nearby us to attack. So, yeah. And we're also now surface spotted by the enemy's Montana. So, well, we're stuck on this island and we're going to be getting shot on this island. In a way, it kind of is good. That's a landing plane, by the way. So we're just uh, losing planes there, but it doesn't matter. matter. The enemy carrier is a deplane already. Let me have a look. Put in Zoya again, Chapai. But how much health? They're actually reasonably healthy enough. So we're reversing off the island to try to angle, but... Uh, if we hadn't thrown away our first torpedo bomber squadron against the Des Moines, we could have potentially had uh, something useful here to drop. Look, seven overpens. That's why we don't run HE bombs there. I would generally define them as useless. Anyways, uh, okay, the map broke a little bit at this point. Let's see if we can, there we go. Got it to unbreak. To summarize this game, first waste of a torpedo bomber squadron threw away all of it to a Des Moines. They weren't stacked. That was uh, poorly done. I'm not sure whether we didn't notice the Des Moines there or what the um, what happened there, but planes over Des Moines are generally bad. Unless you have a midway or someone else to bait or, you know, he's busy with something, in which case it did seem like he was at the end because we had a damaged squadron going into fighters and we still managed to delete them. That was incredibly lucky and not something that ever should be counted on occurring. Just, just don't count on it occurring. It should not be a thing. And expect that to be a little bit of damage at best, because that's really what it should be. And, uh, of course, we took the risk, and it gave us a, a potential chance to win the game um, later on. But we didn't really manage to fully capitalize on that. So from there on, we were down six torpedo bomber replacements. Normally, it's recommended to headwind launch fighters. This is important against a Japanese carrier as a US carrier player, because it allows you to disrupt their opening as best as possible. In this case, our shimmy wasn't moving anywhere, and the opponent carry wasn't playing aggressive, so it didn't actually matter. But against a competent Japanese player, they're going to headwind launch two of their torpedo bombers, then two of their fighters, then their last torpedo bomber, if they're doing it correctly, or at least if they want to be ultra-aggressive. They'll get their torpedo bombers up, they'll get them to the target that they want to drop, especially if it's a high destroyer game, and they can drop and kill a enemy destroyer before you're actually in a position to defend because you launched your fighters after your torpedo bombers. Yes, there's a little bit of time there, but um, the, you're still gaining a couple of seconds on the launching torpedo bombers uh, before your, uh, well, your fighters before your, your torpedo bombers. The, the difference isn't that great. But um, once you get to the midway, it is normally recommended, uh, for me at least, to launch double fighter first because it gives you the ability to control the early engagements and without the control, you ain't dropping anything because the enemy fighters are going to intercept you, you're going to lose your planes, you're not going to have a good day. So fighters first is uh, is my current favorite drop uh, launch pattern. I wouldn't say it's an absolute must, but against, an, you know, in, in general, but I would say against an IGN carrier, US carriers should almost always launch fighters first. It gives you the ability to control your aircraft and get their aircraft under control because in the case of the SX versus Taiho, Essex just has so many more fighters in the Taiho and so many better fighters in the Taiho that the Taiho is not going to want to take any form of uh, carrier engagement unless he has allied anti-aircraft to support him because he's not, not going to win the engagement and even if he does win the engagements in the long term it costs him because you just have so many more replacements in fighters than the Taiho does overall. So with that in mind, he doesn't want to fight you. He's got a lot more strike, he wants to keep your fighters away from his strike and just deal more damage than you, because he's more than capable of dealing more damage than you. He's got m twice the amount of torpedo bombers that you have. Sure, individually they deal about 1,000 less damage, but there's twice as many of them. 
they're more survivable than your, your planes, and he's got dive bombers to set fires and get permanent floodings on, of which we got lucky that the enemy Musashi didn't have a damage control party, so we got a bit of flooding damage off him as well. But uh, with that in mind, moving on with the analysis of the game. From here on, our drops were generally quite well executed. We got a good chance to drop the Kronstadt. Unfortunately, we didn't recognize that he was slowing down, or rather, I think we recognized he was trying to slow down, but we didn't fully recognize the rate at which he could slow down and turn. So therefore, we tried to drop a little bit farther away, which I wouldn't really recommend. The US spread does spread out a little bit. We did a uh, good thing by dropping from the side he was not paying attention to as much as possible. If it doesn't cost you, you know, have to fly around the entirety of the map to drop something, try to attack people from the side that they're unlikely to be watching. A lot of players, especially ships with rapid fire guns, are basically sitting and staring down their binocular views and not looking at the map. They're trying to adjust their aim with every single subsequent salvo, especially like the Moines, Minotaurs, uh, Neptune, stuff like this. They shoot so fast that they have to constantly adjust their guns that they might not simply be paying attention to the map, and they might not actually be there to either you know, trigger defensive or whatever, or they don't hear the AA guns firing, so therefore they don't actually, you know, do it. So that was a very good, very good drop there against the Kronstadt in terms of uh, the uh, planning for it, just that we could have gotten better damage off that if we executed it properly, but that just comes with experience. And if you've only played for five months, that's just a matter of playing the game. It will come. So, yeah, from there on, um, I think we went for the Musashi. Very good torpedo bomber drop. Five hits out of all five. I think one got shot down before drop. Very good. AP dive bombers to finish him off in the end. Again, very uh, good job to get rid of him instead of the Alabama, because the Alabama at that point was being focused and the most likely target to be focused. I know that the Hippo was focusing the Musashi, but uh, in the end... He could have been dealing with a closer target, would have been better for him overall as well, especially since we were sending planes down there to get rid of it. We get lucky with the Des Moines kill, like I've uh, said, don't count on it, don't expect it, it's, I mean, it is pure luck that he didn't defensive and kill all our stuff, maybe it was a fan battle spec, or maybe he didn't have defensive, or, you know, ran hydro, or whatever, but uh, don't count on that, he didn't have really strong AA, so chances are he just wasn't a spec but uh yeah uh that's really most of the attacks this game so let's have a look at the post battle results screens two hundred and forty thousand damage the this is the resolution i got them in so uh unfortunately can't get i mean we can zoom in two hundred and forty thousand damage 13 torpedo bomber hits 26 die bombers and 12 citadels with them 31 planes shot down which is uh, certainly not bad considering the fact that for the most part our fighters just simply weren't at the right place at the right time that's something that this kind of mind games and reading your opponent is something that just comes with experience. Just got to play the game, just got to learn them, it will come. Eventually, if you think about it, you know, think think about yourself from their point of view. Where do I want to attack? Where am I going? It can definitely help. But for now, I would definitely focus on yourself and your own aircraft to micromanage, uh, to learn to, to micromanage more than two squads at the same time and keep them going. Avoid using the escort feature. It I don't believe it's very good. All you're really doing is inviting an enemy carrier to come along and strafe all your stuff to death, which would generally not be good. Giving free strafings away is not good overall because, well, it's free damage for the enemy team. So if you want to use them as bait, I would definitely wait until you can ensure that you are comfortable with the user interface and how the user interface reacts because that's really the biggest deal with micromanaging in this game. So once you're comfortable with that, then you can start experimenting with, you know, baiting, strafings and su such things as that. But even then, the UI, the display and whatnot will bait you in return and you will get situations where the enemy gets to kill all your stuff because you got screwed by UI. Anyways, three kills, four floodings on top, doesn't really matter. One of them was a perma flooding on the Musashi, or at least a flooding for a while. And 12 citadels, see if we can't. There we go. Here we go. Here's the screen we want. 95k on the Musashi, so uh, there you go. 38k flooding. Very, very good damage there. AP delete on the Des Moines, though we did lose playing some in the beginning. We did get an AP finish off on the Kronstadt, along with the three torpedoes on him, I believe it was. Not bad overall. Bismarck 45k with AP bombs at the start. He pushed in and then died, so that was pretty useful overall. A little bit of damage against Montana, two torpedoes, I think one or two torpedoes plus um, 5.7k from overpens or something, or 5.6 from overpens or something weird like that. 
This is the reason why I generally do not recommend running AP bombs at tier 9 and 10. Essex, you can maybe get away with it. Sure, we killed this guy. Sure, we killed this guy or finished him, but AT bombs would have finished him as well. And we did 45k to this guy, but if we send one AT bomb and set him on fire, even the way for it to burn or, you know, to damage control parties, if it does damage control party, if the feeder bomber is dead, we still have a die bomber spare. So, uh, in the end, AT bombs will be more versatile overall. They will allow you to deal damage over time, and damage over time is a lot more powerful than just an upfront alpha like that. Sure, he can't regenerate as much of it due to the AP citadels, it's for battleships only 10% regeneratable, but uh, the same goes with the video hits on the belt. They're also only 10% regeneratable, and if you can pressure them hard enough with flooding, they won't actually get the chance to heal because they're dead. So that's generally why I recommend HE bombs overall, but they do require a lot more management. They require you to you know, drop one or two of the bombs, set fires. They also kill anti-aircraft, which saves your replacements later into the game. Kill the AA gun, set the fires. If they damage control party, torpedo bomber is flooding. You get a good torpedo bomber drop because they've got less anti-air. They kill fewer of your planes on the egress. They kill fewer of your next squads attacking because more AA guns are killed. AP bombs don't really kill AA. You hit them with torpedoes, which do the alpha damage of the torpedoes that they otherwise would have, but you now also get a assured flooding on top of that. Well, not assured, but a very high chance of flooding, especially as a US carrier, your flooding chance is actually pretty solid. Get the flooding, they're going to flood, they're now going to, the ship's going to be moving slower because the flooding damage does that, it reduces the speed of the target, and you get a lot of damage from them that mostly can't be stolen. The, the only way to steal a flooding is to apply another flooding on it, in which case the new flooding is reset and the new player, if you want, that got the flooding steals all the damage from you, but that would require them to take torpedoes. So, there's that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this replay cast. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell me if you would have done anything differently in the comment section down below. Remember, many roads lead to Rome. And uh, if you have any questions, negative like, but please do ask them in the comment section down below or ask me on the Discord or preferably do so in the World of Warships Advice channel in my Discord server. There is a link to that for everybody else in this uh, description of this YouTube video if you want to ask any questions about the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!